Uh, what else do we have? I think that's it. I think we're ready to put it back on the tractor. So I'm going to get you set up and we're going to heave and hoe and get this thing back in the frame. All right, let's get this guy in here. There. So here's the hard part. I'm not taking this tube off of here because it doesn't come off. It's just wedged into the muffler and I don't want to pry on it a bunch and break the only two mounting studs that this muffler still has on there. You can see it still it wobbles a little bit. so. I gotta weasel it in there. It can be done. So I've got the firewall able to move and shift a little bit. a double gasket right here because this flange is warped a little bit and I'm hoping that double gasket doesn't affect the engine placement forward and back. It shouldn't, not enough at least. But... Tight in there too. Oh yeah. Yeah that's gonna be fun. I'm just gonna loosely put these on here like that. I'm going to go underneath and see if I can get the engine mounting bolts to get started. These guys here, four of these to hold it to the frame. Let's see if I can get them started. Well, we're all kinds of cockeyed in there, aren't we? I think I can get that one. Maybe. Yep, I got one. Ooh, missing the washer off a lot of this. That one's got the washer. Let's see if I can get a diagonal one. Okay, maybe not. Let's just try for another one up here. Alright, that's two. We should be close. Alright. They're definitely not slotted. I mean, they got to go where they got to go. You don't have a lot of wiggle room. That one's got a couple threads in it. I got a fourth one to put in, but it's missing the washer. So, let's see if it's... Alright, got the washer for it. Come on. I should have done this one first. Probably the hardest one to get to. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. We're going now. I think we're getting a little pinched against the firewall. That's probably what's happening.
Okay. The next step is going to be the drive shaft. I've got the battery in place here. And I might end up moving it. I don't know. Ooh, let's check this. See if this fits. Yay, just barely, I think. There we go. Get in there. Okay. So that connector fits. That's good. Just barely, but it does fit. Uh, yeah, I don't want to fight the battery the entire time I'm over here, so let's just do the right thing. And I'll just pull the battery. I could try weaseling my hands around the battery, but it's just going to be more trouble than it's worth. So, so let's pull out the battery. So we can gain access to the drive shaft below. There's a rubber strap that holds it in. And I, I, I would call it a somewhat clever design, but it's kind of a pain to work with. You got like a uh, molded rubber cable that slides into the frame to hold the battery in place. But, Hard to get the battery in and out with it there. Okay. The battery's out of the way. Now we're gonna get the drive shaft in. And let's see. We got four bolts to hold in the drive shaft. Here's where we're working at. So the battery's removed. And the drive shaft to engine connections down in here. So you've got drive shaft. And then you've got the firewall, and then you have this uh, air duct that keeps debris from getting into the engine. And the firewall is just kind of loosely in place now. But i got to get to those bolts down there, which is why I took the battery out, because it was right there. So Get them all started first. So we're not fighting any of them. Alright. Alright, they are all started. So I'm going to grab a 7 uh ratchet wrench. And I'm going to get them all as close as I can with my fingers first because. There's not a lot of room to swing in there, so the more you can do without having a, an extra tool in there, the better. All right, that's about as far as I'm going to get. Get this one first. And you probably want something to grab the crankshaft so it doesn't move. Once you go to snug them up, it's going to move the whole crankshaft, so. I don't have anything right now. So, I'm going to have to grab something after I get them snugged up. Firewalls with the pain. So I've got a pulley that's a half of a PTO pulley and a strap wrench. I'm going to put this pulley on the front here to hold the crank in place. Let's get that spacer off there. Come on. Some good tape. And this is keyed, so I'll slide it on. There. So now it's locked to the shaft, 
and then uh, my, we're just gonna play it by ear. I don't know which way this is moving. If I have it wrong, I'll change it. So now I can grab the engine crankshaft and prevent it from moving. And I think, let's see, which way am I going with this? Let me turn it that way. So I want to prevent it from moving like that, which means I need to flip this around. Like that. Maybe just set it against the frame. Oh yeah, that'll work. Set it against the frame. I'll try getting a ratchet and a 7 16 in there and get a better grab on those bolts. Oh, yeah. See it moving? I'll get these nice and tight. Turn 180 degrees. Maybe. Come on. There. So we can get to the other two bolts. Rotate it far enough. Put that in there. Those are snugged up. The engine is snugged up. And now the battery can go back in. to the frame below the battery and that's kind of the hard part to get on because you just kind of feel for it you can't really tell where it's at starter connections and the throttle cable and choke cable and we're getting close this is the part where it's the easiest to make mistakes though because you're so excited about getting it done that, or at least that that's how it is for me I never I've never gotten to the point where I have a sense of calm all the way through. I kind of settle into a rhythm halfway through it and, you know, when I'm really focusing intently, and I shouldn't have hooked up that ground yet, because now I've got a live, well, I guess I don't have a, that's not grounded, is it? 
shouldn't be a chassis ground right now. Guess we'll find out, huh? Yeah, I I still have uh, jitters like towards the end of a a major process like this. something there okay Make sure that screen's in there good yep Okay, uh, now we can push the firewall forward and put these supports back in it. Maybe. There we go. That way it's not flopping around everywhere. And we can tighten up this temporarily and tighten the bottom one permanently once everything's secured. Now I know it's like 30 degrees outside, but I'm actually getting uncomfortable. Like I said, it's that end of the job jitters. You get to the home stretch, man. You just you want to hear it make noise, good noise. You know, you're, you've done all the hard work, and now you just want to see the results. But rushing it is never good. So, so these braces here, these braces here have bolts that connect to the uh, to the pedestal the tower here and then once they're snugged up here you can tighten the bottom ones and just one last thing to rattle just fuel electrical and throttle so let's look up the fuel line we got the fuel line and on this side we'll hook up the electrical it's really simple it's just the main starter post. We've already hooked up this connector for the engine, so there's not not a lot left to do. And we already hooked up the starter solenoid wire. Oh, that reminds me, I need to snug that up. I didn't do that yet. These are 13s. Oh, I didn't mention it, but I did take this starter off and take it completely apart and cleaned it and reassembled it and lubricated it. It works much better than it did in the other videos. So, or at least it did. It did a bench test really well. So we'll see when we get a load on it. Uh, you may notice in the other uh, video we were testing for leaks that the starter would occasionally engage the flywheel and then other times it wouldn't and then there's a ratcheting mechanism inside of it that I think was sticky so tight ground tight power cable and now tight dipstick tube 
Uh, we just got um, basic connections over there. Oh, we got to do the exhaust, right? 13's here for the exhaust. Double gasket style here. We'll see how that works out. It looks like there's still enough threads, so that's good. You see I'm using a quarter inch uh, ratchet for all this stuff. I'm probably going to go back through all of the bolts and make sure everything's tight. Uh, with the exception of the drive shaft, I know that that was nice and tight. But any of the external bolts, just run them real loose right now. Well, not loose, but I'm just snugging them with a real small wrench so I don't snap anything. And then if everything looks good, I'll probably come back in and actually make sure everything's super snug. Um, but a lot of things on the small engine stuff, you, you know, you don't need more than a, a good tug. You hear that? I mean, that's pretty much as tight as you want it anyway. So, throttle and choke on this side. Eight mil bolts over here. The shorter one is the uh, is the throttle. Goes in here at the bottom. Pain to get in there, but we'll go. And I always mark the cables before I pull them out so I know where they went before. I don't know if I mentioned that on uh, another video or not, but it helps eliminate guesswork. Make sure everything moves nice and freely. It does. We got the throttle. Man, where'd all that crap come from? Or we got the uh, choke. Choke goes up in here. And then gets fished in here. And the choke cable has so much travel to it that really as long as the as you open up the air cleaner, look inside, make sure that the choke is completely closed when the button is closed. It's really the best you're going to get out of it. So. Make sure that works. Yep. Looks like maybe I can adjust it here. Looking down in there at that plate, you want to see it pretty much perpendicular to the flange. And we're just a hair off, so let's see if we can adjust with this cable down here. Yeah, there we go. Bring the cable a little bit further up. Now we're starting to Get some tension on that guy there. So that should be good. Let's tighten that up. Check it again. Make sure it works. Yep, it works just fine. Put this back on. And yeah, we should have everything hooked up now. Let's fire it up and see what it does. So before we start it, uh, let's go over what all really we've done. The first thing was the head gasket. And I did the head gasket and it was leaking. So I did the head gasket again. Uh, while it was out of the tractor, I did the front and rear crank seals. Also, while I did the head gasket, I did valve stem seals. We got new exhaust gaskets. We have a new ignition coil and module that has deleted that one. What else? We cleaned and lapped in the valves. 
adjusted the carburetor, cleaned the carburetor, deleted the fuel shutoff solenoid, so that's not going to be a problem anymore, and uh, resurfaced the cylinder head, put it back on. What else did we do? Whew. Cleaned up some of the wiring coming out of here. So now we got a little bit of cleaner solution than they had from the factory. So we basically resealed the whole thing, did some electrical work, pulled the starter, cleaned it up. We did what I would consider a refresh without going in, into the in, uh, engine internals. So let's see what happens. It runs good, let's take it outside and let it warm up. Well, let's go drive it around. Not dead yet. I don't know how much of a fight she's got left in her, but guess we'll see.
did good. It sputtered a little bit. I think the carburetor needs a little bit of work. Uh, it runs great at full throttle though, so uh, if it sits and idles for a minute, it gets a little, uh, when you go to throttle back up, it gets a little funky. But I just gave it a little bit of choke and it came out of it, so it looks like. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, it's been a fun, it's been a fun journey. It's been difficult, but you know you learn a lot along the way, and that's the main point. So, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, stick around for the 1882. Here, let's be optimistic and just put this cover on because we know we aren't going to have to take it back off, right? Oh man, it needs clean. It's got, it's got cruft in it. Uh, Alright, well, I thought that would be funny, but...